Michael, they remarketed uh, well over two million assets in my career. Uh, I'm also a, a board member on the certification committee at NAID. The goal today is to highlight uh, a couple of unique verticals or specific services within. Can I have uh, your mic? How's that? Nope. There we go. Okay. So uh, again, to highlight a couple of companies or some specific companies that compromise the ITAD value chain. So, um, you know, I think we all provide unique services and I think a lot of times people come to this event and you get your, you know, 300 meeting requests, which is great, but are they the right partner for you? Do they really understand your solution? Uh, do they understand all the unique pieces within ITAD that are necessary to provide, you know, kind of an end-to-end -end solution? And so the group here, I don't think comprises all of those. I mean, there's, there's you know, not unlimited, but there's quite a few different special solutions within ITAD that I think a good corporation needs uh, to get the solution completed in entirety. But this is a good core uh, segment of it. So we'll start uh, with Simon Levin from Early Upgrade, CEO and founder. If you do a quick intro for us, and we'll kind of move down the line. Uh, yeah, I'm Simon Levin, CEO, founder of Early Upgrade. We're based in Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, I've been in the industry about 15 years, started off in mobility and transitioned over to recycling in the last six years. Um, we focus on bringing in uh, e-scrap, waste, and maximizing value for our partners in a seamless and easy way. My name is Rob Alston. How about now? It's on green. <laughs> All right, we'll try this one. That sounds better to me. So my name is Rob Olson. I'm the CEO of Guardian Data Destruction. I've been in the industry for about 15 minutes. Uh, I joined Guardian on May 2nd, so really two and a half months in. Uh, Guardian is a premier provider of on-site services to the ITAD and VAR and even OEM industry, uh, focusing on data destruction, enterprise services, data center services, um, and IT packing and logistics. And, we sell exclusively through channel partners, so uh, we don't go direct to the end user. We fill gaps for other service providers in the industry and an extension of sort of your team uh, in the industry. Morning. Good morning. I'm Aaron Zepper. I'm the CEO of DMD Systems, so I expect John to give me a, t a bunch of tough questions since he gets an opportunity to put me on the spot here. Uh, but we are an IT asset disposition company, and the way we think about it is we focus on putting governed solutions together for corporate customers. And so these would be programmatic solutions that help with the uh, data erasure, the on-site services, the, uh, and the complete disposition of the product, focused on reuse and resale of each and every asset, and then recycling as a subcomponent of that. And you can kind of tell from the uh, other guests on the panel that we leverage a lot of partnerships as we go about our business because we're really focused on how do we put those programs together that Fortune 5000 companies need. Good morning. Uh, Matt Freeman from Interasource in Irvine, California. Uh, we are a, I guess for the purposes of this retail uh, wholesaler, so we deal in a lot of enterprise server storage, networking equipment, uh, buying on the downstream from the, from the ITADs, uh, refurbishing it, reselling it to other brokers and end users. Um, you know, you can configure servers on our website, so we have end user and wholesale, and we're also distributing a lot of uh, equipment through, you know, throughout various channels and recycling the stuff that doesn't end up in anyone's hands. Okay, so to kind of recap, right, as we look at these different companies, right, we have uh, Simon, what I would call, you know, a downstream or recycler. Uh, you, you know, they're going to help a company like DMD with materials that we can't repurpose or recycle uh, effectively. That's where they come to the solution. Rob, uh, Guardian's a great services provider. They're going to help us with on-site projects. They're going to help us with drive destruction. You know, Aaron, DMD represents an ITAD, the enterprise-facing solution of, of IT asset disposition. And then, you know, Matt, we're talking about, you know, really commercial and retail resale of those used assets into a remarketing channel that's maybe a higher level than a lot of ITADs are able to attain on their own. So to go back into it, I think, you know, a good question to help define, you know, how these companies work too, is I'll start with you, Simon, is, is you know, how does early upgrade make money? Like, what generates your revenue? Uh, 
How about now? Switch them around. <laughs> uh, we make money by bringing in the product that you guys deem, you know, uh, obsolete, scrap. Basically, where it ends with you guys, it begins with us. So we make money by our first agenda is to reuse as much as possible. So we're looking to repair and refurbish. And then whatever we can't repair, we pull the parts and we either use them in our processes or resell them. And then from there on, whatever's left over is going to be scrapped for the metals. Um, so that's, that's our role. You know, we come in and we pick up where you guys leave off and that's where we focus. Thank you. So, um, yeah, we make money when our partners grow, right? We we're, we're sell exclusively through channel partners, and when our channel partners are looking to bid a big project but they can't do every part of the project, they turn to us and say, can you provide either the hard drive destruction, can you provide the on-site services, whether de decommissioning a data center, um, or packing and logistics, right? White glove, audit inventory, those kinds of things. And so, um, yeah, we make money when our partners grow. And that's, that's really our, our, our goal, is to help our partners grow. And then our, our business model is based on uh, making money in two ways. One is from the service fees we charge our customers. And those services um, all have different structures to them. And then the second way is through a consignment of the assets in which we remove and uh, erase the data on. Uh, we make money really when you know the the ITAD guys that are higher on the vertical than we are uh, sell us equipment at very good prices. You know, thank you, thank you guys. Uh, buy low, sell high. That's what you're supposed to do, right? Um, and then you know we we remarket it and resell it to companies that are doing the same thing that we're doing. You know, there's there's 500 companies that do the same thing that that we do. Everyone's looking for processors. Everyone's looking for memory, and you know we find a way to connect all those dots and, and really just buy low, sell high. We'll keep using this one. So uh, again, I mean, everybody's got a, a different, I guess, you know, revenue generation idea, but it's, it's all aligned into the same service. Um, and again, you know, if you've heard, you know, Rob talk about partner, Simon did too, you know, it, part of that change. So if you could, and we'll start with you, Matt, since you're closest to me, like who is your ideal partner or customer like in the ITAD chain, right? Uh, I guess, you know, anyone who's doing data center takeouts, high-end uh, equipment, Dell, HP, Nimble, we do a lot of the high-end storage, so hard drives, things like that, you know, companies that are going in there, pulling the gear out and really just want to distribute it further, you know, further down the channel. That's this is a tougher question because I think we think I think about this in a in a lot of different ways uh, because we're looking into so many parts of our business and leveraging partnerships for them. So from on-site services, this ranges from um, white glove. It could be full data center decommissioning to uh, just. Uh, uh, logistics and so we we don't do we do some of that ourselves and then we augment with partners and so it, basically we always think about it we can do almost anything but we always assume that we're going to use partners for it because that allows us to deliver with scale across the nation um, and so we're looking for partners here that help us with the decommissioning the uh, component of it we're also looking for partners that help us maximize the, the value of each asset and so one of the things that um, and I know a couple people on my team think about it this way as well, is when we're talking to different uh, individuals and companies here, we want to work with people who have specialty. So if, it's, if your answer, what do you focus on? If it's everything, it's probably not a good fit. It's what is it, like, hey, we're really focused on uh, Juniper networking gear. Okay, great, that's an interesting conversation. And so we're always looking to augment and, and improve our processes by what does somebody do better than us and then building those relationships. And that's both the downstream, it's from the services side, and then it's also um, from, the, um, uh, from the refurbishment and repair side as well. So I feel like that was a perfect segue for what we do, right? We're a partner uh, to folks. We have a nationwide footprint, uh, one of the largest fleets of shred trucks and trucks uh, across the nation to do what we do, right? Provide the hard drive destruction on site, but also the IT packing and logistics services. But then also we have remote techs to the, do the data center 
uh, decommissioning. And so our, our ideal partner is someone who can't do everything, right? Someone who does have gaps to fill but wants to bid on a, bid on a bigger, more strategic project. And that can be anything from a small regional ITAD in one market who wants services in other markets that we can provide um, to some of the larger uh, you know, in companies in the industry where we handle overflow. So for example, we'll handle overflow for Iron Mountain and, and provide some, of, some services for them when, uh, when they can't provide all their services. So really, we have a huge, hugely broad lens on, um, on who our ideal kind of partner is. Uh, because it can be anybody who needs the services we provide. We are a specialty provider in a number of things, and when you don't have enough room or enough space or uh, the geographic coverage, that's when people come to Guardian. Uh, for us, I think All right. we specialize in cell phones, tablets, and laptops. We do traditional recycling as well, so uh, servers, hard drives, all that kind of stuff. But our ideal partner would have a consistent flow um, a, a good amount of transparency on the product and really a commitment to partnership. I think that's what uh, we're really looking for because, you know, our goal is to, you know, pay the most and pay the most for, you know, the duration of the relationship and uh, also to keep the flow going. And I think it's a two-way street. And real quick, based off something that Rob said, I mean, I think something else we need to talk about is we also look to partner with other companies that are just like us. Uh, but we think about that from a regional perspective and primarily internationally. So, in a, you know, as you talk about geographic expansion, we're also looking for partners that can do a lot of the same services we do, but in other countries so that we can deliver a global solution for companies that are looking for that. All right, you get the next question since you went out of line there. Uh, so I'm gonna, I gave these guys a list of you know, five or six questions. I'm going to go off script a little bit uh, because I want to do something a little more engaging and opinion-based. So I think, and I'll start with Aaron, so, and then you know, it will relate to each one of you. So what are you most excited about or concerned about as you look at ITAD and your solution over the next five years? Like, what do you think is going to be the biggest trend that's going to create improvement, or what do you think the biggest risk factor is for your specific service over the next, you know, let's call it five years? So... The biggest existential threat, I think, to a company like ours is the OEMs. Uh, so that's something that I always think about in the back of my mind. I think about it from devices to service. I think about if the OEMs ever lock down, you know, tying the retirement of the asset back into the purchase of the asset and controlling it, no different than they do from some of the firmware, from some of the software upgrades, some of that. Um, I don't know how likely it is, because at least from my perspective, most OEMs use Comp uh, outsource a lot of the services. So I think that at the same time, that's an existential threat, but it also creates opportunity for companies to be the actual service provider back to the OEM. But that's, that's one thing that I think about from a, a, a risk factor. So I'm gonna remind everybody that I've been in the industry for 15 minutes um, before answering. Uh, look, I, I am incredibly excited by the amount of opportunity that I see. I just think that there's, this, there's so much growth here, there's so much opportunity. The way I've been describing it is, yeah, there's room for everybody, we just all need to set our sails right, because the wind is blowing, we have lots of tailwinds here. Um, and uh, I think discipline and focus matters a lot. Don't get uh, too distracted by every shiny object out there but say yes a lot, right? One of our core values is a can-do attitude uh, and make sure that we provide the very best service. And I think as long as you're doing those things and you don't get too distracted by every single opportunity, stay, stay true to what you are, um, while being open to the new opportunities, I think there's lots of room for success for everybody. Yeah, I mean, I like that. I, I don't have too many concerns. I, I, I just don't, I don't sit down and think about them, but I, you know, I, I am very excited about you know, the growth of my company and, you know, uh, expansion into, you know, keep digging into what we're doing and what we're good at, expanding a little bit into a few other product lines and also expanding to uh, other geographical regions and, you know, meeting new partners and having very good partnerships uh, for a while. I wish I could uh, say I didn't have any concerns. That's a pretty cool outlook. Um, <laughs> um, and like Aaron said, you, you know, the, the OEMs are the biggest concern. I think locking down, locking down firmware upgrades, things like that, is going to really 
hamstring the industry. It, you know, if, if customers can't upgrade their firmware, if there's a critical fix or something that they don't have access to, they're going to look to to buy new. They're not gonna they're not gonna keep purchasing off you know off lease or retired retired equipment. They just they can't do it. You know, so like yeah, like Aaron said, that's that's my biggest concern. Hang on, Aaron. No, like before, I, I, before you I, jump I, in, I wanted to say one more thing. I've been quoting somebody a lot, and I don't know who said this to me first, uh, but obsolescence will never be obsolete, right? And that's uh, something I've been saying a lot, and I think that that you know is only going to continue, right? Technology is advancing faster than it ever has. It's becoming more widespread than it ever has, and so that's another tailwind for me is just this you know continuous cycle of increased obsolescence that. Uh, that's going to feed uh, all of our businesses for a long time. Yeah, and I, don't, I felt after I spoke that I felt a little too pessimistic. And so I do think there's a lot of optimism as well. And, and for me, I'm also optimistic that some of the social change that's going on, and I think even the person who's, uh, Daryl was just up here talking about carbon credits, I think this focus on sustainability is just going to create a whole bunch of new avenues and a whole bunch of new markets and a whole bunch of new pressures that change those relationships as well. So that's something I'm super optimistic about. Uh, okay, we'll do maybe one more here. Could be either. Could be either one. Yeah, yeah. Kind of got to tell your personality based on what your response was, right? I would have talked about concerns, certainly. Um, so for I guess people in the room and the people at the event that are you know interested in in finding a new services partner or you know adding a buyer potentially for storage or adding a new downstream recycler or finding an iTad to buy from, you know what I think you know is what's the best way I guess is my question for someone to partner with you. And you know maybe what are some mistakes or uh, maybe issues you've had in partnering with new buyers or new customers uh, that make that interaction more difficult? So I guess what's the best way for them to come to you? And you know maybe an example of an experience where this was not the good fit, not a right way to work with us. Um, you know, and I know we see that all the time as well. I'll start with you, Matt. Yeah, I think it's just like we said earlier. You know, like you said, not everyone's good at, at everything. So. We're, you know, we're focused on enterprise equipment. That is our, that is our niche. That is what we, that is what we do. We're good at it. So, you know, sending us lists of printers and uh, cell phones and tablets and things is not, is not going to work for us. Um, send us lists of servers and big, <laughs> big data center equipment. Um, and that's, that's really like our niche. We stay in our lane. We don't get, we don't get out of it. Um, and that's the that's the best way to partner with us. You know, find us on on uh, interrosource.com. Come <laughs> come see us. <laughs> so I, I'll take a bit of a different approach to it. And for us, it's more about values orientation. And so Rob and I were talking a little bit this morning. It's the first time we've met. Um, like he said, he's been here for 14 minutes. Um, but he said one of the things he appreciated about our team was the transparency. And so I would say that that's one of the ways that we get along with our partners best is, and I see some of them out, like actually out in the audience, and they've been at our facility and helped us set it up, or we have an issue, and they come out and, and helped us uh, with our wipe software, as an example. So thank you, Joe. We see you. Um, but for us, it's about like, here's, here's what we do well, here's what we're not doing, here's where we're struggling, how do you add value to that, here's the ways that our companies need to get along, and it's okay if we have problems, it's okay if, it's, if there's mistakes, it's like, how do we start to work through those, and the real partners that you develop are the ones that work through that. And so for us, it's really about the alignment of values and the ability to converse honestly, transparently, uh, and, share, and, and share where it works and where it doesn't. Yeah, appreciate you sharing that. Uh, so we are we work together. We are we work together uh, in a number of different capacities. But Guardian Guardian does a, a variety of things, right? So you can work with us in a very transactional capacity. We can shred hard drives uh, for you wherever you need them shredded. Um, we can move items from A to B. We can do audit and we can scan your assets and track everything from point A to point B. But we can also be very strategic, and we are leaning heavily into more strategic solutions on the data center activities, we call them our enterprise services, because every opportunity that comes to us, even if it's just shredding the hard drives, is linked to a bigger project, right? We're just seeing portions of the project, and so we are trying to um, engage with our clients and our channel partners. Again, we don't sell to the end user, right? So we're selling through channel partners, 
who are engaging with the end user just to learn more. We want more future visibility into what is the full scope of the project and where do we fit in um, so that we can fit in appropriately. Uh, when I did, before I became CEO of Guardian, we did a lot of, uh, of calls with our channel partners and I was incredibly impressed. I've done a number of diligence calls with, uh, with clients of potential acquisitions and I've never had such consistency. I can't take any credit for it, but everyone said 10 out of 10 Guardian is the best at what they do. Um, and that's an incredible thing for me to inherit um, as CEO and to be a part of this team. But it's a huge responsibility. And unless we continue to do that, we won't continue to grow. So uh, you know, try us for something transactional, try us for something strategic. And I'm a big fan, as Aaron said, of transparency. And we'll just work together to do the best we can for your end user. Hello? OK. Um, I guess uh, you know we try to work with everybody. We're, we tend to be a neutral in the ITAD space because we're not competing with traditional ITADs. We're not going after enterprise or end, end user customers. Um, I think the, the only challenges that you know we could have is um, maybe if you don't have a, as much transparency and you're just looking for like a one-off. Because you know, in the way that we purchase, we're purchasing a lot of unknowns. You know, a lot of times we're purchasing Gaylords or truckloads of broken electronics. And, um, you know, if you're just looking to, I guess, mislabel the, the product and, you know, just get your top dollar one time then move on to another um, recycler, that's probably not, not the best fit for us. Um, we really don't run into that much, if at all. Usually, you know, we can tell if it's not a fit. Um, but yeah, for us, it's, it's just about partnership, transparency, and getting everybody the best value. And if you want to work with us, uh, you can reach out to me or these guys over here, Rodell, Mike, Jace. Um, have a conversation. Let us know what you're looking, looking to do, looking to get rid of, and we'd be happy to help you out. Thanks. Yeah, and that, that's great. I mean, I think, uh, you know, finding partners that align with your values and having, you know, transparent relationships with your customers, buyers, and partners is critical to, you know, success. Uh, targeting kind of a, a wrap up here in a second. So what I'll do is uh, uh, any questions from anyone in the audience before we close out? Uh, Khalid. The one time you don't want to fall, right? I got lucky. So, so in uh, each one of your different business models, what one task or one problem that you could solve better, more efficiently, would help you either grow revenue or make you more profitable? Great question. Uh, let's start with uh, Matt. I'm not jumping back up there. I'll do the rest from down here. Yeah so, yeah, so the question essentially is, is, and tell me if I'm wrong, is what one thing can you improve to grow your business and get better? What's the one thing you need to most focus on to do that? That's a good question. Um, I, I mean, I guess efficiency throughout the, the, the company is, is our main focus right now. We're cycling through so much equipment that, you know, we're probably two, three weeks behind on, on receiving right now because we're taking these complete systems, we're breaking them down, we're inventorying everything, serializing everything, stickering it, and it's a long process. So um, how do we fix that? If anyone has the answer, I would love to, I would love to hear it. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, been a, it's been a long, a long process. We're, you know, we're getting more efficient. We're, we're streamlining some of our, um, our programs in, in NetSuite, and I think we're getting, we're getting there, but it's, 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 a, it's a long road, I'm sure. As anyone who breaks down equipment knows, it is, uh, it is an arduous process. <laughs> So I think about that question in two ways. And the first one is probably on the efficiency side, but it really is, hey, what, what are the things that we're already doing and what can be just a little bit better? Like, what, how do we get like another, uh, you know, for certain types of equipment, finding another uh, channel that is closer to the end user? Um, but all those, like, you're kind of really more functional or departmental. I think for us, the, the other side of it is, 
where are some of those other innovations coming? And it, trying to get us, so while I'm here, I'm hoping to find some other things that help us with to increase the reuse rates. What are some other technologies out there? What are other companies doing? What are some other ideas that companies have to repurpose things? And I think that that's something that I haven't seen a lot of, but, and I'm sure it's out there. How are we taking some of these electronic goods and repurposing them into something new or something different, not just in the same format or the same use case that it had previously. And it's like, oh, it's just two years older or four years older. It's, oh no, we take it and we transform it into this. And I think that's something that uh, the industry, and I'm sure there's companies doing it, and I see some uh, in, in, interesting use cases. And so that's something that I'm looking for while I'm here. Um, thanks for sharing that. The, um, so I thought about this a lot uh, as a new person to the industry, you know, um, and apologize, this might be a little bit of a long answer. Uh, I've discovered we're very reactive, right? Like we have channel partners, our channel partners are getting projects from their end users and then we have to react very quickly. Um, and I would like to get from reactive to responsive to proactive and so where I see the greatest growth opportunity for Guardian is to create more intimate relationships with our channel partners, learn more about their forward-looking pipeline of opportunities so that we can strategically allocate our capital to growth and to growth in geographies uh, where we may not be or just to bolster geographies where we may already be, but there may be more work coming. And so I'd like to move uh, again from reactive to responsive to proactive, and that is through creating deeper, stronger relationships with, uh, with our channel partners. Um, I would just piggyback off Rob, and it's just about uh, you know better relationships and really availability and being more available to listen, uh, make connections, and take the feedback for our pain point, the pain points that our, our vendors have and our partners have. All right, thank you. And we're a couple minutes over, so I'll go ahead and wrap it up. I want to thank you gentlemen for doing this kind of last minute and, and your responses and finally one open uh, Aaron Zepper sock game. I appreciate that, Rob. Thank you. And uh, enjoy the conference and have a good day. Thank you. <laughs>